What first comes to mind when you hear the word pollinator? The monarch butterfly. The grace, beauty, and brilliance that stand out when it takes flight. Over the last 20 years, the monarch butterfly's populations have declined by 80% in the eastern United States. This sharp decline is alarming. It has put the species in jeopardy of extinction. The primary reason for its decline is due to the loss of habitat, particularly the loss of lands with native flowering plants and its host plant, the milkweed. The electric utility industry is making positive environmental contributions for the decline of pollinators like the monarch butterfly. Where we go from here is critical. The time to join together is now. There's not any one individual, governmental agency, private or public sector that can tackle this on their own. It's a call for all hands on deck. The electric utility industry is uniquely positioned to create and maintain habitat for pollinators like the monarch. You see power lines are located in the middle of large tracts of land called rights of way. Power lines transmit electricity to our homes, to our neighborhoods, our communities, across the state of Ohio, and across the United States. On these rights of way, there are tall growing trees and vegetation that, if they're not maintained, can grow into the power lines and cause outages. I bet that you didn't know that trees are one of the leading causes of outages at electric utilities across the United States. I'm sure you've experienced a time when spring storms come rolling through our territory, as well as winter ice storms, and sometimes they take the power out for two to three hours, sometimes it's two to three days. So utility companies have to have integrated vegetation management programs to manage those tall growing trees on our rights of way. IVM is a holistic approach to managing plant communities on electric rights of way. Our vegetation specialists go out and identify tall trees and work to eliminate them. And they do this through an integrated approach. Maybe you've seen our crews out in your neighborhood. They use chainsaws, mowers, other types of mechanical equipment, and safely apply herbicides. This integrated approach leads to a low growing, sustainable, diverse plant community that provides host, the host plant, the milkweed, for the caterpillar, as well as flowering shrubs for the butterflies. So it's a win for the pollinators and it's a win for the electric utility industry as we can provide safe and reliable power for our customers. Another reason for de the decline and the loss of habitat is due to land fragmentation. I'm sure in your area you've seen large housing developments being installed, as well as there are shopping malls and parking lots that go in. Well, this reduces the amount of available land to provide habitat for pollinators. One of the great things about the electric utility industry is that we have over 450,000 miles of power line across the United States, equating to nearly 11 million acres to manage pollinator habitat on those rights of way. While the electric utility industry is making positive environmental contributions for pollinators, there are other great conservation efforts underway within the industry. In my role as Director of Vegetation Management at First Energy, I have the joy and pleasure of working with a team that manages vegetation starting right here in Ohio and goes all the way to the New Jersey shore. Through the course of that work, we often have the opportunity to enter into partnerships and one of the first partnerships I was involved with was at the Ohio State University at the Mansfield campus. And right in the center of campus, my company has an electric corridor that goes through there. We worked with the university, the Ohio State Extension, and many other partners, and we planted and installed a Monarch right away demonstration plot. We planted native seeds and plants, and it's a great place to gather with students, faculty, as well as members of the community. And we talk about the benefits of the garden, the benefits of pollinators, and learn how to plant a garden. And then those individuals can take that information back to their homes and to their communities, and they can further the pollinator conservation effort. Another very innovative collaborative project 
that the utility industry has been involved with is with the Electric Power Research Institute. And it's called the Power and Pollinator. And we get together on an annual basis through workshops for educational purposes. We share best management practices, as well as talk about technology that's available to further conservation. One of the funnest parts about this particular collaborative is that we have a, host a weekly pollinator celebration. It's called Pollinator Week. And during that week, it's a lot of celebration and promotion and awareness of pollinators. So we listen to music, we talk about um, the benefits of pollinators, as well as we have cooking demonstration using ingredients that are reliant on pollinators. And this year, we got the children involved, and we had them draw pictures of pollinators, and we created a calendar. And that was really fun. Children are great advocates of pollinator conservation, and they love butterflies. One of the largest pollinator conservation efforts underway is called the National Candidate Conservation Assurances Agreement. And this is a voluntary agreement that was de developed in cooperation with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the University of Illinois out of Chicago, the Right Away Habitat Working Group, as well as 40 individual collaborators. And this group has set aside over 2 million acres and is using their resources to manage lands on the electric sector as well as the transportation lands and is specifically for the purpose of the monarch butterfly. While the electric utility industry has made many positive environmental contributions to creating and promoting pollinator habitat, you can make pollinator conservation personal as I have. Remember, there is no regulation currently protecting the monarch butterfly. The time for all stakeholders to join together is now. And there's a lot of ways to do that. We can start right in the workplace. Many companies have environmental stewardship commitments and employees can get involved. At my company, we hosted a pollinator webinar about how to plant a garden. And we had over 150 employees involved in that initiative. Afterwards, we went out to our work locations and we also went out into our communities and planted pollinator gardens. Another idea that our employees came up with was to, on our brand new rights of way, was to replace traditional grass seed mixes with pollinator seed mixes. So we were able to provide brand new pollinator habitat that didn't exist before. Another great place for pollinator coordination effort is right in your community. Most communities have garden clubs, they have beautification committees, and tree commissions. I grew up in a small town called Doylestown in Wayne County, and I was a member of the garden club, and I helped to design, create, and install a pollinator garden for monarchs right next to our police station. And then we invited the second grade elementary students, and they released monarchs in the garden. It was a wonderful experience for everyone. And what a better place to start at home. Everyone can put in a pollinator garden. You don't need a large space, just a little sunny spot in your yard. And you can plant native flowering plants as well as milkweed. Another consideration is if you do have a lot of land that you're mowing, you could stop mowing it for a while and allow those low growing flowering plants to arise in its great pollinator habitat. Where we go from here is critical. The time to act is now. We have to all join together. It's a call for all hands on deck. How will you join the effort to save the monarch butterfly?